All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right, so uh, good morning. My name is Stefano Machado and I'm an undergraduate biomedical engineering student from both Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú and Universidad Peruana Cayetano Heredia. And today I he I'm here to present my work. Uh, so let's, let's start by talking about a little bit about musculoskeletal diseases. For example, neuromuscular pathologies like poliomyelitis or stiff person syndrome or Duchenne muscular dystrophy uh, are often associated with an alteration of the biomechanical properties of muscles that can be quantified by measuring the local stiffness of the tissue. Uh, traditional shear wave elastography approaches assume that shear waves propagate unidirectionally and in alignment with the lateral imaging direction. The reality, though, is that the structural inhomogeneities within the human body cause biases due to reflections, and that soft biological tissues like skeletal muscle are anisotropic, and therefore the aforementioned assumptions are not realistic. So traditionally, to address these challenges, directional filters have been applied in order to isolate different propagation directions. So that's where things differ uh, with this new approach that we've used. So recently, Parker et al. proposed a novel technique called reverberant shear wave elastography that involves the generation of a reverberant field that propagates in all directions within the media. Uh, this approach uh, is able to leverage the naturally produced reflections and in, in order to generate a reverberant field, multiple external vibration sources are used. So Ormachero demonstrated that reverberant shear wave elastography is feasible for the assessment of the viscoelastic properties of homogeneous viscoelastic phantoms, as well as in vivo assessed breast, liver, and kidney tissues. Uh, so the aim of this study is to evaluate the feasibility of RSWE for the in vivo assessment of the viscoelastic properties of skeletal muscle using the biceps brachii as a preliminary muscle group. So there are two main specific objectives in this study. The first one being to effectively generate a reverent shear wave field within the muscle tissue. And the second one to analyze the viscoelastic properties of the tissue um, by, by analyzing both the estimated shear wave speed values and the viscoelastic parameters obtained from the Kelvin Boyd fractional derivative model to see if the technique is able to differentiate between relaxed and contracted states. So let's take a look at the experimental setup. So four experiments were performed on the biceps brachii of a healthy male 19 year old volunteer that presents low body fat levels and high muscular development. The ultrasound probe was placed along the direction of the fibers to control anisotropy and three external vibration sources were used to try to generate a reverberant shear wave field uh, as shown in the figure. The vibration frequency range for the experiments was 200 to 300 hertz in steps of 50 hertz and half of the, of the experiments were performed in a relaxed state while the other half what were performed in maximum voluntary contraction or MVC for short. To process the data, a multi-frequency approach that includes, that includes the use of a spatial filter that consider only the extracted phase information was used in order to obtain the shear wave number by feeding the experimental data to the lateral or correlation function. This function indicates how random and homogeneous the field is along the orthogonal direction to the measurement axis. And in practical terms, it defines the presence of a reverberant field theoretically. Afterwards, a minimum threshold of 0 0.7 for the goodness of fit of, of the estimated shear wave speed values was applied. Uh, the Kelvin Void fractional derivative model was used to uh, obtain the viscoelastic parameters from the experimental data by using a curve fitting approach. And also the dispersion slope D or DCSDF values were calculated. So let's take a look at the results. These are the shear wave speed images superimposed under corresponding B mode images for the first relaxed and MVC experiments. As you can see, there's a high surface area of color pixels in the selected regions of interest, indicating that most of the estimated shear wave speed values in these regions present a high resemblance um, to the theoretical model. 
and thus for us it indicates the presence of a reverberant field. These are the same results for the second experiments. And um, as you can appreciate in these plots, there's a noticeable difference between the two states. And there's also a noticeable increase of the shear wave field values as the vibration frequency increases, as it is to be expected for a viscoelastic material, such as skeletal muscle. Now, this, these next plots are um, the results of the curve fitting to the KVFD model in order to obtain the viscoelastic parameters, uh, the most important of which being the coefficient of viscosity, eta. Moreover, uh, the goodness of feed values for both of these um, curve fitting approaches uh, are greater or equal to 0 0.8, indicating uh, or rather giving us assurance about the accuracy of these estimated viscoelastic parameters. Uh, now let's discuss even further the key findings of this study. Uh, first of all, as it was mentioned before, um, the the SWS images show uh, present a high surface area of good fitted SWS values even after the applied minimum threshold of R squared uh, equals 0 0.7, and this for us indicates that the setup used was able to generate a uh, reverberant field within the tissue. And moreover, these results confirm that the reverberant shear wave elastography approach can differentiate between contracted and relaxed states as shown by both the SWS estimated values and the viscoelastic parameters from the KVFD model. Uh, for instance, the estimated SWS values fall uh, within the expected range for a skeletal muscle tissue, and they present differences between relaxed and contracted states that are congruent uh, with the literature, as is shown in the slides in the slide that mentions, for example, the work bo by both Hoy et al. and, Con and Gonzalez et al. Uh, on the other hand, if we talk about the viscoelastic parameters, the coefficient of viscosity eta is significantly bigger uh, in the MVC experiments than in the relaxed experiments, indicating more viscous behavior for the contracted state. Uh, finally, the dispersion slope values for the best fitted uh, MVC experiments is more than double the value of that of its relaxed best fitted counterpart. And this is congruent with the fact that contracted states present more viscous behavior than relaxed states, and more viscous materials present higher dispersion slope values. Now, it is also important to point out that the present study has several shortcomings, but its preliminary results within this limited framework provide guidance for future directions. So previous studies done on the mechanical properties of the biceps brachii controlled a wide range of parameters that can influence significantly on the obtained results about its stiffness, such as age, size of the biceps, elbow angle, and MVC percentage. In this study, for example, MVC percentage was assumed to be 100%, which may or may not be the case for the late repetition due to fatigue. Only one elbow, elbow was used, only one elbow angle was used, only one muscle group assessed with only two repetitions per setup. And the subject uh, did not present neuromuscular pathologies, which have been shown to cause a significant difference in stiffness compared to the symptomatic counterparts. And he also presented low body fat levels and high muscular development making him able to recruit more muscle fibers at will for voluntary contraction. So a muscular characterization study that takes these variables into account must follow in order to further develop the technique for clinical practice. And finally, further consideration must be taken about the setup to generate a reverberant shear wave field within the muscle tissue. To be precise, different configurations for the position size, shape, and number of external vibration sources must be evaluated in order to try to generate a reverberant field inside the muscle fibers. Okay. So okay. to sum up. Uh, maybe um, if you want a question, uh, we should yeah, conclude sure. here. Okay. So we have time for one quick questions. Anybody? Okay. Have, of course. <laughs> this is uh, interesting. Um, so you're using only one single vibration source in your experiment? 
if I understood correctly? No, uh, we are actually using three because we need three. multiple okay. vibration sources to generate a reverberant field. Uh, so we have two of them pressed against the long head of the triceps and one uh, on top of the glenohumeral joint. Okay, okay, all right. Three sources. And then you have reverberation inside the, the muscles and the bones. Okay, thank you very yes. much, Estefano. So uh, we're almost on time. Thank you again.